let's continue on our conversation. And I had a question come through last week and uh, the questions kind of aligned to the vulnerability and the pen testing. And one of the questions was, well, what are the do's and don'ts of vulnerabilities and vulnerability management and penetration testing? And I thought, look, let's just address this uh, as a sort of um, another video that I would can sort of cover together around some of the requirements across both of these uh, both of these areas. I'm just going to put over here the actual requirements. And I'll, I encourage you before I start writing some stuff on this screen and before we start whiteboarding, I encourage you just to spend a few minutes. If you're new to this field or you're not sure about the difference between the two, kind of just go away and, and sort of determine, understand, well, what is vulnerabilities, right? Like the vulnerability management, what is it? What do we need? to do with it, like define the two different characteristics between the two. And then think of a series of questions. And I've got some questions just to the right of the screen here, which we'll look at in just a moment. Um, what are the, some of the actual requirements when we do vulnerability assessments and vulnerability management and also pen testing? And that's what I wanted to cover in this video is a more intuitive requirements across both areas that we can sort of cover and define um, just providing a bit of value across that. So I think both areas, and I've got a couple of almost nine, almost 10 points here across of all these. And I want to sort of just discuss as we sort of go through these. Um, do we require a scope for both? Now, if we do a vulnerability assessment and a pen, pen test, but chances are we do require it across both. So I'm just going to put here for Vuln and yes, for pen test, because if this is a third party uh, 10 that's coming in, well, they need to scope the workout, they need to define costings and obviously the financial side of things and then the scope of work itself, uh, which then kind of moves into the area of the engagement. So does a rules of an engagement need to be defined if we are doing uh, a vulnerability assessment? And if you say, well, yes and no, I, I kind of think the fact that we don't really need a specific rules of engagement for a vulnerability system. So I'm going to say no for vulnerability and I will say yes for pen test only because uh, a rules of engagement, again, sort of defines your engagement outline, your methodology. Um, this is your method. I'll say method, not anything else. Uh, your approach you know, your comms plan, stakeholders, right? It's going to be your uh, your engagement style across the engagement, how you intend to deliver the actual, the goal and the objective. I'm going to say goal and objective because chances are when we start scoping this workout, if our rules of engagement is purely, let's just say it's an external assessment, and we've been given a list of external IP addresses and external assets that we can uh, have access to test during this engagement. Maybe phishing is in scope. We can actually go away. We can consolidate a bunch of OSINT data. Uh, we can do credential attacks on portals and all that sort of has been defined. Well, our rules of engagement is going to define how we intend to do all that from our tool sets to our phishing methodology to our OSINT methodology to how we intend to communicate. Are we going to have a daily stand up? So typically with communication, if we just touch on that in just a moment. Um, we may have to do several touch points throughout the day. So typically, you know, in some cases, customers will like to do like a, an 8 a.m. And I can feel everyone's eyeballs roll back into their heads because sometimes it is a, you know, an 8 a.m. maybe to a 6 p.m. engagement. And that's your engagement style. So 8 o'clock will be an alert that goes out to you know, the, the three stakeholders who are engaged in the delivery. Uh, and then goes, hey, or we do it. So it could be two methods of the approach. One, we have an alert, like an email that just goes out and says, hey, testing has started. We don't need to do anything. Uh, and then we do another alert at 6 p.m. Hey, testing has finished. You know, we nothing was found today or we're doing this. And we're sort of giving, this is just basically an update. In, in most cases on how I would like to, I like to run these is we can either have a stand up and the stand-up defines a couple of things. One is our goal and our intention for the day. Uh, and two, it's any risks that we foresee. And that's always keeping everyone accountable. It's keeping the customer up to date. So that way we are coming to them with the problems, 
not the other way around and waiting to be in a reactive sense. So we always want to define how we engage and what our communication style will look like. And that's where our rules of engagement defines that. So for our vulnerability assessment, kind of not really needed just because, you know, we're not kind of exploiting anything. And if we do exploit for our rules of engagement, we need to define how we intend to do that. So again, the methodology and the approach um, and obviously the milestones and outcomes and our goals and intentions and all that sort of stuff gets defined in our rules of engagement. Uh, what about invasiveness, right? So one is uh, if we talk about um, uh, invasiveness, so how aggressive or how non-invasive is, is the assessment going to be? Now, if we talk about our vulnerability assessment, well, vulnerability assessments are kind of non-intrusive, right? So it's really not going to impact anything. It may, you know, at some maybe odd instance, overload a maybe a, a bad bandwidth location, maybe if you're doing something over a VPN of some sort and may saturate the link a little bit, but it's not going to, you know, cause a disruption. It's not going to go away and exploit something and then obviously cause a system crash or a service of some sort. So, you know, where we're talking maybe a pen test uh, and it could and always is typically invasive, right? So it is going to be a little bit more invasive or aggressive in these sort of assessments that we're going to run. Uh, well, what about asset collection or asset inventory? And I would say for both of these, if we talk about each of those, so if I say, for vulnerability assessment, well, yes, we're going to need a list of assets to run the, the vulnerability scanner across because if we even are a third party in this instance, um, they're going to have to give us the, the subnet ranges, right? So they're going to have to specify the IP addresses and what's going to be in scope and maybe out of scope. So at some stage, they're going to have to provide a list of assets to, you know, if we're going to run this internally, of course, and obviously to the external party. So there is a form of assets that are going to be required to be given. Um, so pen test, I'm going to say no here. And typically no, because a couple of reasons. One would be uh, in most instances, when we do a pen test, it is going to be kind of black box approach. Well, and I say kind of because typically at times when we discuss how we're going to engage, yes, one, we need the IP addresses and domain names that are going to be in scope, but we're not going to be, you know, defining that in terms of the customer. So we're not going to go in and say, okay, where we're demanding a list of assets, these assets are going to be in scope just due to the engagement. So what's going to be in scope and out of scope, we're not going to be targeting pretty much everything across the infrastructure should that be in scope if needed. If not, then no, it isn't. So when we talk about asset collection or asset identification, well, for the pen test and a list of assets are, yes, they're going to be provided to us, but what our scope and our intention is not to you know, run a scanner across them and, and define or identify those assets, our definement will be predicated on our rules of engagement, which means our rules of engagement define our style of assessment. So for a vulnerability assessment, we do need a list of those assets to run and, consider, and facilitate that engagement style. So a little bit different for each of those. Um, the next part of that is permissions, right? So actually, if I just sort of talk on the assets here just a moment as well, if we have a black box approach, so this is why I'm kind of leaning towards no, only because with a black box and we've got white box and we've got our gray box, right? Fancy enough, it's a gray pen. Um, each of these areas have their own thing. So typically with a vulnerability assessment, if we talk about Vuln, it's typically a white box assessment. So all information gets supplied, it's provided to you. Here are our ranges, subnet ranges, all that sort of stuff, locations, things like that. Because we, we need that information to be loaded up in obviously the scanner to then deploy it. No chance of going on there. We don't know what subnets we're pointing at and we don't have the information there, right? So it kind of defeats that purpose. Now, when we do a pen test, it can fall into a white box scenario if it is a white box like application and we'll talk about permissions in the next step. However, in most cases, it being a black box, we're kind of treating that at the form of the information is not supplied to us. So kind of tinkers on the black and the gray side of things, where we're not asking for information of how the thing is designed or architected. The whole point is if we're doing that external asset, you know, the external pen test here, for example, well, then if they just go to us, well, Andrew, the domain name is XYZ, I'm just going to say xyz.com.au and that's the domain. And then everything else underneath there is in scope. Now, obviously, sometimes with this, 
you may get into some issues if you're going to test something that redirects to another third party and you've tested that, assuming that's in scope. Again, you're going to have to run through the engagement with the customer and define all those sort of parameters. But in this sort of scenario, you're going to be doing that as a black box because then they're not going to be supplying the the underlying assets for the external perimeter. So you're going to go away and use tools like, you know, AMAS, um, you know, subfinder, et cetera, and then try and define the, the subdomains, for example, that list and, and define what they will look like because that is a black box assessment. The information is not supplied to you. You're going away and you're going to be discovering that as an attack award. So that's the whole sort of engagement style of it being a black, typically a gray box as well. All right, so let's power through uh, permissions. For both, well, for a vulnerability assessment, yes, we do need permissions. Um, and also for a pen test, potentially, you know, sometimes yes and no. Um, so I'm going to say yes and no here because um, when we do, uh, you know, web application assessments, for example, we will need those credentials. Now, obviously, that's going back to our ROE and defining what that application looks like, what's the intention of the style of the engagement with the customer. If we're going to need credentials, then credentials will need to be supplied for us to be testing the application and functions and features and the roles and the users and stuff like that. So kind of yes for vulnerability assessment, absolutely. Um, for, for the pen test, yes and no, sometimes those can be sort of hand in hand. Uh, do we need to be aware of any corporate security policies, internal security policies? Um, well, yes for both because I was gonna say vulnerability assessment, yes. Pen test, yes we need to be updating internal policies based on our vulnerabilities and risks, right? So if a pen test says we have 51 key risks across the infrastructure and they're all RCEs or, you know, common high vulnerability exploits because we've got an outdated software dependency on something, well, then your corporate policy says that you've got those, so you would need to go away and define and redefine them. So meaning it is going to impact your security policy or your certain process and procedure to how you may handle an incident response. So if you've got a dependency on a process, then yes, they will both need updating and to be reviewed within your security policies within the organization. What about uh, facilities and buildings? Well, if we talk about vulnerability assessment, well, what do you think? I'm just going to take a minute here and pause. I say, would you need uh, to take into consideration any building uh, or infrastructure uh, information? So for vulnerabilities, I would say yes, absolutely. For a pen test, not so much. We don't need to really worry about that unless it's in the engagement. So if we are targeting uh, a specific organization and the engagement is to go on site and do things like that, which we'll talk about the physical component, um, then for this specific example, then we don't really need to care about real building facility or any other sort of considerations because they're going to be out of scope. Uh, if we talk about physical, so vulnerability assessment, no. Um, or it could be actually a yes. So I'm just going to say yes here because if the engagement style is to prove a certain vulnerability within a physical control, then maybe, absolutely. Uh, if it's for a pen test, I'm gonna say yes as well, because you're gonna be attempting those exploits as well. So if we're gonna get access to maybe a man trap door, or is that defining that a man trap door exists? So yes, for both, I would say, because you wanna be testing the actual functionality and the controls of that man trap, or maybe a swipe key pass access of some sort. Um, so when you're doing your order for the physical, for a vulnerability assessment, yes, and for the actual exploitation, if that's going to be in the engagement style. Um, the next part here, I've got retesting. So do we need to consolidate or um, uh, facilitate any type of retesting for one, a vulnerability assessment? And yes, we do. And for a pen test, absolutely. We want to be testing both functions and features either before the assessment so we've got a snapshot of a way something is meant to be intended to operate or do a certain something before that and then after. So our exploit or if something happens after that, we want to then go away and prove that there's been changes between the two and now that what was before isn't currently what's now. So you've gone away, you've retested everything. So should there be a vulnerability with something, you've gone away and you've revalidated that the updates or a fix has happened or a dev's gone on there and they've 
you know, they've configured rate limiting, for example, on a web page because we were able to send a bunch of information in and now we're now segmenting that out. So now we're going to send in one request every 60 minutes, for example. So they've rate limited that web server and then we want to go away and retest what we did to, you know, break the application of some sort. So yes, we would need to do retesting for both features. And finally, reporting. And for the vulnerability assessment, absolutely. And for the pen test, I would say 100% yes, because both of them require reporting. Uh, there's obviously a process that's going to go into our uh, security assurances for both of those, so vulnerability management and our penetration test. And there may be a level of reporting that we need to do to executives, right? Or to other business units or to customers, right? So each of those levels will need some sort of reporting functionality or an updated list of vulnerabilities that we're going to then maintain and manage. So hopefully this video kind of shares a little bit more light into the actual roles and the requirements across vulnerability assessments and penetration testing. Um, I hope you found this video useful. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.